നമസ്കാരം ഈ പുതുവത്സരത്തിൽ ലോകമെമ്പാടും പ്രചോദനമായി മാറിക്കൊണ്ടിരിക്കുന്ന ചിന്തോദ്ദീപകമായ ഒരു അനുഭവ കഥയുമായാണ് നിങ്ങളുടെ മുന്നിലെത്തുന്നത് ഡി വിനയചന്ദ്രൻ്റെ പ്രശസ്ത വരികൾ ഓർമ്മയുണ്ടോ കാടിനു ഞാൻ എന്തു പേരിടും അതിന് കവി നൽകുന്ന ഉത്തരം കാടിന് ഞാൻ എൻ്റെ പേരിടും എന്നാണ് യഥാർത്ഥത്തിൽ കാടിന് സ്വന്തം പേരിടാൻ അർഹതയുള്ള ഒരു വനിതയുടെ അനുഭവ കഥയാണിത് അമേരിക്കയിൽ നിന്നും ഭാരതത്തിലേക്ക് ചേക്കേറി ഇവിടെ സ്വന്തമായി ഒരു കാട് സൃഷ്ടിച്ച് വന്യമൃഗങ്ങളോടൊപ്പം ഒത്തൊരുമിച്ച് ജീവിക്കുന്ന ഒരു വനിതയുടെ അതിശയിപ്പിക്കുന്ന കഥ ഹലോ I have been a nature lover since I was born. I was very fortunate that I had a mother in particular who absolutely loved nature. She was part Native American Indian. So that was in her blood and in her own culture. And so I was very fortunate to have her influence in my life. She was always looking after animals, loving birds, and helping us to forge that link with nature as well. So from the beginning, from birth, maybe from past lives, I have always been a nature lover. America in New Jersey, a restaurant in the United States, പമേല മുംബൈക്കാരനായ അനിൽ മൽഹോത്രയെ കണ്ടുമുട്ടുന്നത് പ്രകൃതിയോടുള്ള അടങ്ങാത്ത അഭിനിവേശം അവർ ഇരുവരെയും ഒരുമിപ്പിക്കുകയായിരുന്നു വി എൻഡ് അപ്പ് ഗോയിങ് ഓൺ അവർ ഹണി മൂൺ ടു ഹവായി ആൻഡ് വാൾ വി വർ ദർ വൺ ഓഫ് അവർ ഫ്രണ്ട്സ് ഷോറസ് ബ്യൂട്ടിഫുൾ ഏക്രിഡ് ദാറ്റ് വാസ് ബാക്ക്ഡ് അപ്പ് അഗെയിൻസ്റ്റ് ദ ഫോറസ്റ്റ് പ്രിസർവ് ഹാഡ് ദ ടു പെറനിയൽ സ്ട്രീംസ് റണ്ണിങ് ത്രൂ ദ പ്രോപ്പർട്ടീസ് ദാറ്റ് ഫീഡ് അക്കാക്ക ഫോൾസ് and Kahuna Falls was beautiful forest land so we decided to make it uh, the decision to buy this land and they were very very beautiful we had about almost 40 acres there and it became our first wildlife sanctuary there our first um foray also into organic gardening where we grew organic vegetables and uh produce and what we didn't take ourselves and we shared with our friends and we gave the the rest of it to a women's crisis shelter for abused women and children it was a wonderful learning period of time because when you live on an island you realize mother nature's ability to to keep giving us these wonderful ecosystem services that we depend on for our survival about 1981 something like that his anil's mother sent me an anil a telegram that anil's father was not well that he had taken some falls and said please come quickly dad unwell uh anil's father did pass away 6 months later and we took the asti his asti up to haridwar to immerse his ashes into the holy ganga 
and we fell in love with the Himalayas. It reminded us of our years that we spent in Colorado, in Rocky Mountains together, where we had forged such strong links between each other, and again, very strong links with nature as well. So um, we fell in love with the Himalayas and uh, actually decided to look in the Himalayas where we could possibly buy lands to set up a forest sanctuary in the Himalayas there. We found lands there, but then we became aware that there was a land sealing act there where one family can only own 12 acres. That's it, 12 acres in the whole region. And that was nowhere near enough to be able to do what we wanted to do. My husband came south was to try and find a place where we could buy more than just 12 acres to do a forest preserve, forest and wildlife preserve. And he traveled all over the south, in Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Kerala uh, Andhra Pradesh, into, uh, into Karnataka. Angene kaadu vechu pidipiche, sarva charajarengalu motti jeevikyan, avar kandathiya sthalam, angu dure engu mella irunu. Kerala Karnataka adirthil, kodagile, oiru kochchu gramathil, roadu polu millata, aas thalathil bhoomi vangi apol, naattgaaruke alphada thode avare noki. There were many challenges that we have had to face. Uh, some of the challenges were just the logistics of getting here, the practicalities of getting here. Uh, the, the road, especially in the monsoon season, the road that was leading here didn't exist during monsoon. It basically didn't exist. My husband had to, had to walk several kilometers just to come and see the initial land, which this is the initial piece that was purchased. Uh, to see it, there was no road during monsoon. There was also the question of people wondering what the heck we were doing here. I mean, this was not a place you would come to earn money, even from an agricultural point of view. That's why they had abandoned so many of their lands. It just didn't make, make sense with all the rainfall. So it was, why are these people here? What, what, is, what is going on here? And so it was a little bit of a, apprehension at first, not quite understanding what we were doing and why we were here. But over time, especially the older generation, understood what we were doing because the Kodogu, the Kodava culture is steeped in nature. The ancient Kodava culture has grown out of living in harmony with nature. വർഷങ്ങൾ കഴിഞ്ഞതോടെ സമൃദ്ധമായ കാട് വളർന്നു അധികം ദൂരെ അല്ലാത്ത ബ്രഹ്മഗിരി വന്യജീവി സങ്കേതത്തിൽ നിന്നുമുള്ള അതിഥികൾ പമേലയും മൽഹോത്രയെയും തേടിയെത്തി and there is a family group that make their rounds here uh, relatively periodically, sometimes staying for weeks into months, especially during the dry season, because we have an abundance of water and abundance of food for them. They're also very important because they help clear pathways for some of the other animals, like the gaur or the somber or uh, barking deer, muntjak, or other things. And they have never attacked us, never charged us, never ever done anything at all. But we always respect their space. My husband and I had gone down to what we call the elephant pond because it's a very large, large, big pond that the elephants go into. And they love it because it stays deep and wet and full, even in the dry season. We had gone swimming there and coming back, I heard the sound of snapping of the bamboo.
That is the first sign you know that the elephants are here. And then um, I heard the water moving, so I, they were still in the water. The trust that she and her daughter showed me was unbelievable. They came and went directly under me while I'm on this bridge, directly under me, and went further downstream to eat more. That is really incredible when you think of how elephants are treated today in most places where things are thrown at them, fires are burning, and, uh, and, and it's, it's very upsetting. Incredible fragrance, incredible fragrance. Thank you, Kerala. I got the parent plant from there. My husband and I realized very early on when we had come here, how very blessed we have become, being able to spend our time in these forests with the fresh air that we breathe every single day. The water we have here is incredibly pure. We've actually taken this water and had it tested in Bangalore. And they said it was the purest water they had ever seen. And they asked us where we got it because they wanted to build a bottling plant <laughs> to bottle the water. <laughs> we did not tell them. We in India, are, especially South India, are so dependent on these forests of the Western Ghats. It is the portal for the southwestern mon mon monsoon. And without these forests, the monsoon will not be drawn into India at the proper time. Iverude Kada, Aphe Kendra Mai Matia Vanya Jivigalip, Uduvala Mayula Bantham, Aphedia Mayurino. Sita in the Perula Keraman Idu Verudeim, Jivida Tinde, Avipaja Kadagamai Marikar Nirino. Sita had been found as a small fawn by the Forest Department personnel in the Brahmagiri Wildlife Dis uh, Sanctuary, and the mother was nowhere to be found, perhaps killed by a predator. When she was about four to five years old, she came in season, and the somber males were all following her, especially one of our biggest alpha males. And sure enough, she did get pregnant. She gave birth to her firstborn, a little girl, in one of our barns. The little baby being almost white in color when she was first born. One time, when I had come back from my morning walk, I heard Sita calling out desperately, and that was not like her at all. She never, ever made a lot of noise. And so I crossed over the river and slowly went to see what was disturbing her and her fawn love. What was she afraid of? And I looked in the sand on that side, but I did not see any paw prints or anything there because we do get large predators here. Suddenly, out of the forest area, Love burst out first and ran across the river. And then Sita came out, saw me and, and yelled again, called again, and then ran across the river and kept calling to me and calling to me as if she was trying to warn me of something. Later, 
I found out what that something was. In a camera trap that's on that side, downstream somewhat, and at the about 20 minutes that it would take to make a leisurely walk down there, according to the time that Sita had warned me here, it was the tiger. It was the tiger. Sita is no more. We don't know how she disappeared, probably from a predator. My husband and I would start our, our mornings with our various prayers and pujas and things, but every morning we would walk in the forest. We would go either up our very beautiful road area, which has some of our biggest great-grandmother trees, or we would go into the jungle one place or another because I put camera traps up throughout the sanctuary. Uh, this helps to document um, what species are here, and it also helps to inhibit any kind of trespassing by poachers and uh, illegal loggers in our area. So we would go in and look for the camera traps and change the cards and see what kind of species we had caught on the camera trap cameras. Late afternoon evenings, we would go down to the big elephant pond and swim there and spend time just communing with nature and species there and just relaxing before we would make our way back up before nightfall. Anil Malhotre Mai Kai Bidichin Adana Vadigali Pamela Petta Nurudavasam Uttakai Tangalde Atma Katha Purti Garicha Ayatri Adinde Avasana Varigalum Edicherta Anil Yatriai. And yet he had no shortness of breath, no chest pains, nothing. There were no early warning signs whatsoever. And then the afternoon and night before his passing. He and I sat with another film crew right into the night, and he talked again about his favorite subject, which was Mother Nature. Mother Nature, spirituality, truth, um, integrity, all of those types of things. And we talked well into the night. Again, he was absolutely fine. No uh, warnings whatsoever. Uh, in fact, after they left, he sat with me at my computer, helping me edit the very last chapter of my book so I could get it to the publishers in time by the deadline. And then as I was sending it out, he sat in his chair and um, interestingly enough, was watching a program on life after death. The next morning after I got up, I came into his room and he was on his bed and he had apparently suffered a massive heart attack. When I came in, I did CPR um, and tried every way I could to revive him. He could hear me. I wasn't happy. I said, come back, come back, come back. Don't leave me. And we continued to do CPR all the way to the hospital, but he was gone. So we could not revive him again. But it was what God willed. It was his time. He had done the work that he was brought to do. And um, now I have to carry that legacy on. I have to try as best I can to protect and preserve what he spent his lifetime creating. So. That's my task for the rest of my days as well. I still feel his presence very often with a certain amount of guidance. And 
In addition, I believe that I've been sent certain individuals since his passing that have been helpful. Every morning, just about, my husband and I used to walk on this pathway. And it was always a joyous time because early in the morning all the birds are singing, butterflies are just waking up looking for flowers so that they will be able to gain their nutrition and warmth. And now it's really hard. It's hard walking in the sanctuary a lot because of all the memories of us being together, walking in the sanctuary together. So it's, it's hard. The future that I hope for Sar Sanctuary is that it'll con it will continue to be a safe haven for species large and small, predator and prey, as well as all kinds of flora and biodiversity of both flora and fauna. This being a working model for others to replicate across India, the, the youth of today. I would also remind them, please remember that virtually all of our problems in the world today come from humanity's disconnect from Mother Nature. We need to return to our mother. So without question, this sanctuary has been a major, major success. Uh, and I hope and pray that it becomes an inspiration for others to do the same work that we have done in our small way. all the destruction that has taken place and continues to rage on, I must believe that life on this blue and white pearl will survive, for love is stronger than evil. Somehow, in some way, it will prevail, for there is nothing more powerful, nothing more healing than love. From the heart of nature, Pameli de Atma Kathe de Thalakat to Bola the name, Sherikim, Pragardi de Hridayatil Nanamula, Urujividam.